Now that June has wrapped up and we've closed our budget out, it's time to check in and see how I'm going with my debt progress and my payoff there, and then also how my net worth is coming along. So if you wanna see what those numbers look like, stick around and we'll see. Hello and welcome to or welcome back to my channel. I'm Erin and I am documenting my journey to debt freedom and financial independence. One of the ways that I am doing that is by tracking how I go each month with paying off our debt and then also how we are going in terms of our net worth. And we did have a goal at the beginning of the year. We wanted to increase our net worth by around $50,000. So we're going to check how we're going against our benchmarks in that as well. And the reason that I track net worth is that it is argued that a person's net worth is really the single most important financial metric that somebody can track, that it's more important than a person's salary. It's more important than their monthly budget. Of course, how being a budget helps to have a higher net worth, but that's a whole different topic. But it is essentially, it's your financial scoreboard and it shows you day to day and month to month progress that is on a grand scale. And it's also very easy to track. It's an easy calculation. You just subtract what you owe from what you own and the difference between those two is going to be your net worth. And really the biggest decision is what you should or should not include in that. And ultimately this is helping me to be intentional with my money and help me to stick on my goals. So big goal for 2021 is to pay off our um, our credit card and our personal loan. So that portion of our consumer debt, we wanna be debt free entirely except for the mortgage at the end. And so I do of course have here a handy dandy tracker that I have of that progress that we have. So you can see when we started at the beginning of 2021, we had a starting balance of for our uh, credit card debt and personal loan debt, $41,936. At the end of June, we were down to 900, or not 900, whew, that would be nice, $9,877. So our progress in the current month, we paid off $3,474 in debt, and that came to about 8% of what it was that that we that we owed. So from 41,000 down to 9,000, um, whoops, this number is wrong, 9877. This is why I love Excel. I can just change it right there and it changes everything for me. So we owe $32,059 is what we have paid off this month. And that is 76% of our total debt pro progress. So only having 24% left to pay in the rest of the year. Very much ahead of schedule. We were originally aiming for the end of the year. Right now, we're looking at having this paid off in September. Our mortgage is a bit of another story. This is going to take longer to get, to get through, so to speak, because it's a higher number. So our balance at the beginning of the year was $403,512. At the end of June, $398,712. And I do round down just to not have cents in there because they annoy me. Our mortgage progress in the current month was $926. So a slight increase as compared to the previous months because we did increase our payment, our weekly payment by $30. So we're paying an extra $120 towards the mortgage. We have paid off in principle, which is, Kind of a bit, yeah. Principal always hurts to look at compared to interest, but we are now have paid $4,800. So we've paid off about 1.2% of our mortgage. Not, not terrible with that, but that is going to become one of our focuses the rest of 2021 and then definitely in 2022 and 2023. Having these numbers allows us then to go and calculate our net worth. And various people have different things that they will include in, in their calculations. And um, if you have any questions about how it is that I have decided what we are going to include, you can go ahead and drop those questions down in the comment box below. 
If you don't want to leave a question there, by all means, you can reach out to me on Instagram as well. Just shoot me a DM over there. I'm more than happy to answer any questions that you have, not just about my net worth, but if you have any questions about our financial journey in general. To this date, we have been including our home value, what we have in cash on hand, and this is not our sinkings accounts. This is cash on hand savings, for the most part, money that is not going to be spent. What is in our retirement accounts? We just started our external brokerage account, have been including our vehicles and then an, a different separate investing account that we have. We are going to be, it's going to hurt. Um, we're going to take a big hit in July because I'm going to drop these out of the calculation. I just want to keep it as conservative as possible. I'm not saying that you should take yours out. It's entirely up to you. There's a lot of other things. People include their HSA or sometimes 529s for their children, etc. It's all a personal decision. Find what works for you. Our home value, we just base our home value off of the most recent appraisal. The most recent appraisal was $470,000, and that was from when we purchased the home. We're looking at getting appraisal. We were thinking this year, but we're probably going to wait another year. We think five, six years is probably a good time for getting another appraisal done and having that paid for informal. Yes, we keep an eye on what houses are selling for around us, but that still doesn't tell you what what people, the appraisal is what a buyer is going to be able to get financed for. So for us, that's the most conservative estimate to use. $470,000 there, that makes up 53%-ish of all of our assets. We have 6,766 cash on hand. Not a bad month for our retirement accounts. So looks looking at about a $13,000 increase. So, uh, we're sitting at $340,000, $340,648, which considering that we only moved to Australia 10 years ago and started our super accounts. And so that was when I was in my mid thirties and my husband in his early thirties, most people start their super annuation accounts because it's a guarantee by the employer. They have to pay it. So they start it when they get their first job, could be 16, 17, 18 years old, late to getting to the party on that because I have such a generous contribution from my employer and my husband contributes extra as well to his, we've been able to really get those amounts up, so not sitting too bad. Our brokerage account, this was our new account that we opened up um, in June, so that was sitting at $949. Uh, 50,000 for the vehicles, 25,300, again, those are gonna be dropped out, so right now, looks really nice, $893,663,000 in assets, but it's fleeting and temporary. So we have had a change in assets for the month of 11,579. We have increased our assets of $30,887 for the year. So at three and a half percent. So tracking along quite nicely, particularly with, with thinking about how our superannuation is tracking along. So our assets have to be offset by our liabilities. So this is what you, the, what you owe part of that calculation. We, have, we are down to two liabilities. The first is our mortgage. So as we just saw in our debt update, owing $398,712 there. And our loan, 9,877. So our total in liabilities, $408,589. We have decreased our liabilities for the month by 4,400. Our year to date liabilities change. So this is including what we've paid off on the mortgage is $36,859. So we have had an 8.27% um, decrease in what we owe. So the nice thing is, is that our decreases are outpacing our increases, and this is really helping our net worth, which is the final part of the calculation. And that net worth for us now, subtracting our liabilities from our assets, $485,074, so close to the half million mark, and it's going to all get wiped away. Monthly net worth change was $15,979. If only I had paid 21 extra dollars to the credit card, that would have been so fantastic because it would have been a nice even $16,000. So a really good month puts us, um, you can see here that May was not as great. Um, April was really good in that we had a 20,000. So having another 15 to 16,000 there is nice. We've had a year to date net worth change of $67,746. So an increase of 16.23%. 
there are some people that say your estimates of increasing your net worth by 10 to 20 percent each year is about a target rate anything above that you're doing really good so in general we are happy with where we are sitting at we just really want to get to that more conservative that more conservative estimate mainly because we have no interest in selling off any of our cars or anything else if we do it's pretty much going to be a net neutral um, or even a net loss because we'd be replacing them with another vehicle and this finally brings us to our graphical representation looking at our net worth month by month so it's exactly the same as the numbers before just in a graphical um a, a you know a graphical illustration Sometimes I like looking at numbers, sometimes I like looking at pictures, sometimes I like looking at both, and it's easy enough to do in a spreadsheet to have all that done. So again, this just all automatically populates for me. So you can see that our assets are in this light blue, our liabilities are in peach, our net worth is a trend line in between, and we're seeing exactly what we want to see. We are seeing these increasing over time, we are seeing our liabilities decreasing, and we're seeing our net worth. Not only is that line going up, but the difference between our net worth and then also what our liabilities, that, that gap is getting bigger. So we are pretty happy with how it is looking thus far. So that wraps up what I have for where we are sitting with our debt payoff and with our net worth improvement. Um, because we're going to be, I've been going back and forth on whether or not I want to keep doing these videos month by month because we are eventually going to pay off that debt and I don't really have anything in terms of a debt. I won't really have anything in terms of a debt update other than the mortgage, but I do anticipate seeing our net worth really changing as we start getting into the investing. So I'm, I'm still thinking back and forth on that. If I want to keep doing that, let me know your thoughts. If you even, if you even have any in the comments below, if you enjoyed this video, do please give it a thumbs up. I have mentioned that our, our journey is going to take a massive pivot coming up in the next couple of months and that we have been focusing on becoming debt free. We're really going to be shifting to becoming financially independent. And that's a very different story and a very different journey. And so more than happy to have you come along on that journey with us. If that is something you are interested in seeing, though what is the next step? I know a lot of us have in common a debt-free journey, but the, okay, now what? And this is really kind of going to be us starting, you know, starting fresh with very a very different perspective and a very different lens. So if you do wanna see that, then hit the subscribe button to get notifications for that. If you enjoyed the video, give it a big thumbs up. Any questions, put them down in the comment box below, or as I said, you can contact me via Instagram. I'm pretty active over there and actually much better, I think probably at getting notifications than for YouTube sometimes. As always, remember to choose kindness, show gratitude, always keep a positive mindset, and I will see you in the next video.